Good day, everyone, especially to you, Coach Jude, and to my fellow classmates. I am Mika Alana Esenico, who will introduce our topic for today. Along with me are my active members, Mr. John Gael Atilano, Ms. Raisa Bobotan, Mr. Nicole Cancelier, and Ms. Ella May Casimiro. And we are the SH number 3, the theme Assiduous. So in this presentation, we will talk about a learner-centered psychological principles. The term student-centered learning refers to a wide variety of educational programs, learning experiences, instructional approaches, and academic support strategies that are intended to address the distinct learning needs, interests, aspirations, or cultural backgrounds of individual students and group of students. While psychological principles help us students to learn more effectively, the principles are organized into five areas of psychological functioning, such as cognition and learning, motivation, social and emotional dimensions, context and learning, and assessment. Learner-centered psychological principles provide a framework for developing and incorporating the components of new designs for schooling. The principles emphasize the active and reflecting nature of learning and learners. From this perspective, educational practice will be most likely to improve when the educational system is redesigned with the primary focus on the learner. Psychologists, in collaboration with education or educators, can help decide how best to apply sound psychological principles in the redesign of America's school. A new and exciting vision of schooling and psychologists' role in this vision can then emerge. So right now, I will share to you the following 14 psychological principles pertain to the learner and the learning process. First is nature of the learning process. Second is goals of the learning process. Third, construction of knowledge. Fourth, strategic thinking. Fifth, thinking about thinking. Sixth, context of learning. Seventh, motivational and emotional influences on learning. 8. Intrinsic Motivation to Learn 9. Effects of Motivation on Effort 10. Development Influences on Learning 11. Social Influences on Learning 12. Individual Differences in Learning 13. Learning and Diversity and lastly, number 14, standards and assessment. FYI, these 14 psychological principles are divided for about four factors. Interesting, right? So all you have to do is to stay still. To describe them, let me call on Miss Raisa Bubotan. And next to her is Miss Ella May Casimiro. Let's go, ladies! Okay, thank you, Miss uh, Mika Aliana. So, good morning, Coach Jude, and good morning, classmate. Today, I will describe the cognitive and metacognitive factors and motivational affective factors. So, um, let's begin with the cognitive and metacognitive factors. Cognitive and metacognitive factors. So, under cognitive and metacognitive factors, we have six principles on it. The nature of learning process, goals of the learning process, construction of knowledge, um, strategic thinking, thinking about thinking, and the last is context of learning. So at this time, I will differentiate the cognitive and metacognitive factors on learning so that we will be able to, uh, to know the difference between these two factors. When we say cognitive, it is a term of referring to a mental process involved 
in gaining knowledge and comprehension. And when we talk about metacognitive, it refers to a higher order thinking which involves active control, uh, cognitive process engaged in learning. For the cognitive, uh, it's just like we need to have a point to remember something or, or to have to have idea that we that we will be needing um, in the near future. But in the other hand, which is metacognitive, it is just like a switch in our mind um, that needs to trigger to think, trigger to think critically, and then afterwards you need to think beyond thinking. So basically, when we describe these factors, cognitive deals with the mental processes such as memory, learning, problem solving, attention, and decision making. However, the metacognitive deals with an individual's higher order cognitive processes where a person has active control over her or his cognition. So that's all in the cognitive and metacognitive factors. Now let's proceed to the uh, motivational and affective factors. For the motivational and affective factors, there are three principles. The motivational and emotional influences on learning, intrinsic motivation to learn, and affects motivation on effort. For these factors, which is motivational and affective factors, this domain refers to the student's effort and engagement while learning. The emotional states, beliefs, and interests that influence learning. So um, when we say motivational, it is how the learners push themselves to learn and how, and how they value learning are concerns of the motivational factors. For the affective factors naman, relate to the attitude, feeling, and emotion that learners put into learning tasks. And that's the difference between motivational and affective factors. So when we describe these factors and its principle, the learner-centered principles indicate the student's motivation to learn is natural when they perceive the context to be supported and the content to be meaningful and relevant. Enhancing this uh, motivation is necessary for learning and students' motivation impacts and, uh, and what and how much is learned. So that's the end of my topic. So for the next reporter will be Miss Ella Casimiro and she will describe the developmental and social factors and individuals' differences. So Ella May, take it on. So, thank you, Miss Raiza. Hello, everyone, and to you, Coach Jude. I am the one who will describe the third and fourth factors of learning center. So, the third one is developmental and social factors. It refers to the students' previous experiences and learning readiness as well as interpersonal relations between and among students and teachers or facilitators that affect current learning. Activities that account for these differences between and within students are more effective. Furthermore, learning is influenced by students' positive interactions and personal relationships with other students and relevant adults. The conditions and variables that influence emotional, intellectual, social, and physical development from, from conceptions to maturity. The examples include parental attitudes and stimulations, peer relationships, learning experiences, recreational activities, and hereditary predispositions. And the four factors of learning center is individual differences factors so the individual differ on the basis of personality ethnic origin physic gender early family experiences social and cultural factors attitudes motivations intelligence and abilities and perceptions environment consists of physical intellectual social moral, political, economic, and cultural forces. All these forces cause individual differences, 
Modern psychologists believe that individual differences are caused by both heredity and environment. For example, people who score high on major measures of antisocial personality, low in constipation, high in neuroticism, and low in intelligence are more likely to engage in criminal activities including homicide. And that's where my report ends. And at this moment, let's call on our next member, Mr. Atlano, to discuss the different factors affecting